I will tell you a few words about pulse. Pulse diagnosis was a method which was used as a hallowed, respected method from even the time before Christ. Obviously, the pulse was used because you could feel the pulse very easily at the peripheral points in the radial pulse. There were six pulse positions, three on the left side, three on the right side, and each position there was a superficial and a deep pulse, thus making 12 different pulses. Different periods of history, you can see there were different pulses which have been described and therefore there was not a general agreement about these pulses. More so in the right hand. In the left hand, the, the water pulse, next one the wood pulse and the most distal, the fire pulse, was generally agreed as the main pulses. On the right side, there are many discrepancies, different authorities in different periods of history, different areas, particularly the proximal pulse of the right side. The proximal pulse of the right side was today is called the water pulse, but they call it the thoracic pulse, they call it the second fire pulse, they call it the chest pulse, and etc., etc. So if you are dealing with the right side, the proximal pulse, be careful because different authorities have a dif different interpretation of that pulse. Now, in taking the pulse, they said the man has to get up early morning. He must not be anxious. He should have had a good night's rest. And what is more, he should empty his bladder and possibly his bowels. He should have a light breakfast and he should be unhurried and that is the best time to take the pulse. The ancient Chinese texts describe that the best time to take the pulse is before the fresh breath of the morning yin has been exhausted. It is no use to take the pulse if the patient comes running to your clinic at 9 o'clock in the morning patient comes running, that is not a time to take the pulse. Patient has been ha just having sexual intercourse, he has not, he has been hungry, he has been doing break dancing all night, he has not rested, that is not a time to take the pulse. The pulse is also of not valid if taken during a period of an acute illness, acute accident and in a state of very severe anxiety, what you will get is an anxiety pulse. Of course, everybody who is ill has a degree of anxiety, but if there is a very high order of anxiety, then the pulse uh, reflects mostly the fire pulse, and the other pulses are subdued. It is important to know that the pulse reflects the various internal organs rather than the tissues and the special sense organs. And to give you a very simple idea of the pulse, those are the five elements. Those are the five elements, fire, earth, metal, water, wood. We find that the five pulses, the six pulses correspond to, right, this is the pulses on this side, the left side, and that is the pulses. On that side, these are the three pulses. That is the right side. Now, if you examine the left pulse, you will find it corresponds. This is the water pulse, that is the wood pulse, that is the fire pulse. You will find. The problem is here, we don't know whether that is the water pulse, there is a question mark. That is the lung pulse, and that is the Earth pulse. But some periods of history, they have turned this upside down as well. So that when you come to the left pulse, it is all right, when you come to the right pulse. In order to verify this, 
you can have to look into Hippocrates' pulses, Aristotle's pulses, Paracelsus. <coughs> you have to look into Ayurveda, Siddha, Unani, Tib, Persian medicine, Babylonian medicine, Egyptian medicine. They all had pulses. Every one of those medicines, Tibetan medicine, very similar to Chinese medicine, and in many respects almost identical, except in certain treatment methods. These pulses were, are identical in all the medicines. It is the right side that is pro problematic. And they said that the right side of the body, it is the woman, and the left side is the man. Oh, then we understand. Yes, and there you are. <laughs> it keeps changing, and that is why it is difficult to say. However, that may be, although that is man and woman, there is one difference. The left side, which should be man, right? This is the woman here, and the right side, which is the woman, that is the man here, of the water pulses. So that in this is the yang, and this is the yin side. But in every yang, there is a yin, that is a yin, and in every yin, there is a yang. That is it. You understand? Yes. So, pulse is a very interesting subject, and, the, and I have not much time to discuss it, but I'll just give you one or two points. The most uh, important uh, pulse di diagnostician in the world today is a man. He's about 80 or 85 today. His name is Professor Yang from China. He's the most highly respected pulse diagnostician. About 12 years ago, we invited him for a World Congress in Sri Lanka. And he described all the beautiful pulses. There are over 365 nuances of the pulse. When the metaphor of words failed, they gave very flowery expressions. There is one pulse, it's like a pearl rolling inside a basin. There is another pulse, like an onion reed, swinging in the wind. There is another pulse like water flowing on a duck's back. There is another pulse like a stone thrown into a pond, blob, it goes down. There is another pulse like a cork floating on water, and so on and so forth. Such beautiful terms they describe. Another one which is a slippery pulse like an eel, and a slippery pulse is a very dangerous pulse it shows many hidden diseases in different organs. So they used this metaphor, and this Professor Yang, he described in a three-hour lecture, one by one, and he got on and described this, no props, no TV, no pages to write. He described them with his words. They were, his description was so beautiful that your, your skin your, your hair stands on end. You understand? He made it almost like a Hitchcock story. Right? And there, the hall was packed. There were at least six, seven hundred people. You know, there were no tables. Everybody was seated so close to each other. You can hear a hush when he described it. And more than so many interesting pulses he described. And he made it come alive by his patients, his diseases, and how he correlated with tongue, this and that. And at the end of three hours, it was question time. I was, by the way, seated where, where in the corner, exactly in the corner where Bodilis, Bodilis uh, seated because I was the administrator. So people come and say, telephone call, sign this paper. I was seated by the door. And somebody asked Professor Yang, how many pulses have you actually felt? And he was a very honest man. He said, in my patience, of course, that is a different story. The real expert, he said, is not myself. That is, I am not Yang. I am not the expert. It is my uncle, who is now 95 years old. And my uncle taught me all this. And I learned from him. And my uncle told me, after learning about 40 years from him, that he actually felt only five pulses, really speaking. The others, we try to imagine that it is there. Only five, he is very confident that it is there. That is supposed to be the man who taught the greatest expert in China about pulse diagnosis. Then Professor Yang said, actually, 
I feel for certain three different pulses when I am very confident it is so. And he made the mistake of asking me who was by the door, halfway inside the door, Hello, Professor Jayasurya. So I was talking to somebody else. I said, yes, excuse me. How many pulses do you feel? Now this was a very difficult question because I am not a pulse diagnostician. I did not want to admit it. So I said just to say something. I was ashamed to say I know nothing about this. I told him, in point of fact, I am fairly certain and uh, my uh, experience of all these years is on two pulses, I said, and that is whether the pulse is there or not there. <laughs> and I said, sometimes I am sometimes I'm not sure of that either. <laughs> and by the way, I can tell you, I was not bluffing, I was not joking. If you have worked in rural areas with children who are ill with high fever, convulsions, people who are drowned, people who have had who have been bitten by snake, who have been poisoned, chronic alcoholics who have taken a large amount of alcohol, toxic poisoning. <coughs> it is very difficult to find whether the pulse is there or not there. Many times it has happened. In our country, in Asia, they have taken a man as if he is dead. They think it is dead. They have put him onto the funeral fire. We don't bury our people. We make a big fire and put him onto that, and the man has jumped out of the fire and run away. And <laughs> you think it is a joke? No, it is not a joke. It has happened. It has happened, right? And I know I have read in Scandinavia, in, in, in Canada, people, children who were thought to be drowned after many hours, they have been revived. So that it is very difficult to say. And the ancient Ayurvedic physician who felt these pulses, they, when they had any, any difficulty in snake bite, in toxic poisoning, in chronic illnesses, in old people, in very young people, malnourishment, whether the person is alive or dead, they never gave the diagnosis that the man was dead. What did they do? He says, his condition is very low, he's almost dying, his heart is nearly stopped. They never said stopped. But I have to do my last test. And the last test was, he said, if he doesn't come round with this, then there is nothing. You prepare for the funeral. He took a small knife and he cut here, he cut here, he cut here, he cut here. He cuts the radial arteries, he cuts the jugular veins. Even if this guy recovers, he has no chance. <laughs> because these are four vital blood vessels. That's it, he goes. Now he is dead, my friend. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You understand? Because these mistakes have happened. Going back to pulse, pulse is something that you do not learn on a blackboard. I myself learned pulse in China. I had a <coughs> friend in Korea. I learned from the patron of our society, Dr. Toshiko Kodera. It's a lady. She taught me pulses. There was another man in Osaka called Yasuda. Many different people I learned pulses. And all was not the same. There were many differences in those people. In my own clinic, I do not practice pulse diagnosis too much. Only if there is a case which I do not, uh, I am not able to produce results. And however, I feel in actual practice, there are a few diseases that I have learned to appreciate the pulse. I feel very much so the pulse of migraine. I, I can feel an anxiety pulse. I can feel the pulse of many kinds of heart diseases even before it, the onset. I do, the, I do feel the pulse of chronic colitis and the pulse of early lung disease like bronchial asthma. And this most certainly in my practice, most of the time I can feel. And what is more, I can even feel the improvement. I have not been a very thorough pulse diagnostician and I have not spent much time, but I think it is like listening to an orchestra. If you have not listened to the music in my country, when people beat the drums and put the flutes on, it makes no sense to you. No, no absolutely not, he has heard. Neither is your Western music, if, if I am not initiated, Bach and Beethoven and Brahms means nothing to me, it's an, just a noise. But however, if you are a musician and you see the Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra, there are 200 people playing. If you are a good musician, you can close your eyes and you can say, that instrument there, that double bass there is playing out of tune. 
it is a symphony and your ears, your hands, your fingers must be tuned to the pulse. And of course, to get in to learn and appreciate the Berlin, Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra, it takes many years of studying and listening to music. The pulse is also a great symphony like that. If you want to learn pulse diagnosis, you must take people known cases, diagnosed cases of cancer, of gastric ulcer, or asthma, of allergy, and constantly keep feeling, and at the end, you will slowly begin to realize that there is a symphony in it. Finally, in order to finish up with pulse, pulse diagnosis, may I tell you this story? People ask me, what is the origin of pulse diagnosis? Why was the pulse so important? So that at one period of history, in fact, the pulse was the only method of diagnosis. That is according to one story, when there were some beautiful young patients, they did not trust male doctors because they may have had other designs and ideas when they saw the female patient's bodies. <coughs> there is actually a painting in Shantung where there is a young female lady. She, she is seated behind the screen. You understand? She's seated behind the screen, and then through the screen, there are two holes in the screen. You understand? And she's putting her two hands like this. And the other side, this is the doctor, he comes and feels. He's not allowed to see this female body because he might get bad ideas. And what is more, the man sees the, feels the pulse, he makes the diagnosis, and he takes a mannequin. You have seen this, this acupuncture man with acupuncture points. He is given the mannequin and he puts the needles into the mannequin. Not on the patient. He is not allowed to see the patient. He only feels the pulse. And there is an old, ugly, toothless spinster who comes, thanks him, takes this and sees the exact place that this needle is put and he puts it. She puts it onto the patient. Because they were puritanical society and at many stages they did not even